Greta having made Lady Bird, she wanted to work with people that were going to elevate her and challenge her, and I think in the end she probably elevated and challenged them. Every single department had had their work cut out for them in terms of what they had to do in telling this story from Jess in production design to Jacqueline in costumes to York with cinematography. I wanted it to feel like it had this energy of youth and excitement. Greta wanted to honor the material in a different way. Everything had to feel modern and be of the period. Our production designer was Jess Goncher. We wanted it to feel both like the kind of thing that you want to crawl inside and live inside of, and also real. We talked about the various different worlds. You have to have the March House, which I tried to make look sort of run down on the outside, but it's beautiful jewel box on the inside. And it had to be different from the Lawrence House, where Lori lives, which is appealing on the outside, but maybe something missing on the inside. We spent time at Louisa May Alcott's house in Concord, and the thing that struck both of us, her sister, who was a painter, drew all over the walls and painted all over the walls and painted on the windowsills. And when we saw that, we thought, well, we know exactly who that family is. That's the weird hippie family who lets their kids, like, paint on the walls. So we did all of that in the house that he built. I visited that house probably 10 times, became very friendly with the head curator over there, Jan, and she was very available to us, and we spent a lot of time over there. Orchard House has been carefully preserved. Almost everything in it belonged to the Alcotts, and it's become a touchstone for people who either love the book or they're curious about this book that garnered so much attention. This house is where Louisa wrote and set Little Women. She wrote it at this small desk that her parents encouraged her to use. Her father actually built the desk in an era when it was considered improper for a woman to have a desk of her own because first of all, it's just not ladylike. And secondly, some physicians believed that brain work such as writing would destroy a woman's health. Mr. and Mrs. Alcott did not agree. They encouraged Louisa's writing and Little Women, which was based on her actual family, was written here. The Lawrence House was a mansion that we found that just had the right feeling. It probably had like 50 rooms in there, but there's only two people living in there, which I always like imagine like that's how Mr. Lawrence and Lori, you know, were living. I think for the first time in all of these movies, you could see the geography between the houses and how these two families became friends. So that was pretty cool too. He had an incredible task of like all of these different locations because it's sprawling. And I can't believe how many places he transformed into New York City and Paris and Concord and Boston and balls. We couldn't go to Europe to shoot any of these scenes, so we found the most opulent, beautiful castle in maybe any part of Massachusetts. And the gardens are rich. And it's on the ocean, and the scale of it is amazing. So we found that it was a very unique place and that would definitely pass for being in Europe. Our costume designer, Jacqueline Duran, is a genius. She and I spent a few glorious days together in London at a costume shop looking through research because I wanted everything in the movie to feel like they're not costumes, they're just these people's clothes. Because that's, to me, what makes it feel modern. I love working with Jacqueline. She's an actor's costume designer. Jacqueline understands that a way of finding their character is through what you put on, is literally the layers that you start to put on as an actor in the morning start to help you go deeper into who the person is. I also wanted every piece of it to be researched and be able to be footnoted. There's a very particular painting by Winslow Homer of girls on the beach that was painted in 1870, and one girl's just wringing out her, her bathing costume. And there was something about just that action that's like, oh, well, I know that girl. Yeah, she's wringing, it's wet. Every character has their own palette as a child and an adult. 
And you'll see that there's clothes that one character is wearing as a child that another character is wearing as an adult or a piece of fabric that got sewn into something or Lori and Joe are constantly exchanging clothes. I will say together, they have this quality of they're both beautiful and they're both handsome. They're kind of androgynous creatures. And actually, Jacqueline had them trade clothes the whole movie. So they're always wearing each other's clothes. Like the scene where Joe offhandedly gives him her ring, he's wearing a yellow vest, which then she's wearing when they're on the hillside and he proposes to her. Uh, there's things like that all over the movie because I just wanted them to seem like they were one and the same. Mm. Have fun, little Daisy. Hey, Laurie. Jacqueline really created individual personalities for each one of them expressed through the clothing. Meg, I would say, of the four sisters, is the more traditionally feminine. She's the one that wants to get married, and she's very romantic. And even with Meg's costume, Jacqueline and I wanted to portray this kind of courtly love, almost sort of medieval feeling with her clothes that her imagination almost belonged to another time. Something that I did work with Jacqueline on was making Beth's costumes a little wonky or not quite fitting her properly. I think she's a little forgetful sometimes and she's so focused on the present and is so in love with her sisters that she can sometimes forget about the material things. And I think that's such a beautiful touch to Beth as a character and her complexity. <laughs> Jacqueline really wants you to feel happy in the clothes that you wear. So I had a joy being Amy because I got all the best things. We kind of made this narrative that whenever Amy was free or, or not doing anything, she'd be adding trims or buttons or frills, and that was such a wonderful little thing to, to give specifically to Amy. The hard work that they've put in is mega, and you can see that on everyone's costumes. I have a lot of fun in the costume department. <laughs> We shot on film because I wanted it to be connected to the photochemical process, which they had in 1861. Oh, it is hard. Oh, is there like an air pressure or something? It was the closest kin to what was actually around at that moment, and it felt like if anything ever should be shot on film, it's this one. I think if a film you're going to see has been shot on film and has been shot in a ratio that is made for the big screen, it's simply a better experience. You're seeing how it was meant to be made. Our cinematographer on the film, York, was really excited to work with because I love his work. I always love the beauty of his cinematography, but also there's a restlessness behind the camera. And I think about period pieces, sometimes they can feel very nailed to the floor, and you feel almost as if you can feel the weight of the lighting rig. And I wanted it to feel kind of kinetic and light on its feet, and I wanted it to be beautiful, and we were looking at all these paintings for the lighting. I kept saying I want the camera to be very swirly in youth, and I want it to feel like we're responding to them in real time. I had a hunch that he was the person to do that, and he ended up doing it brilliantly. It was a real feat from every single person who worked on the film. They did this incredible job of making this world, and they did so many subtle things to communicate that. It's priceless. It's just so wonderful, because it makes you feel like you're getting to be part of this little world.